Okay. Um, can the people on the back row can hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, most of the presentation will be hands-on, um, usually my hands on the keyboard. Um, the idea is to show you how to build a very uh, trivial Debian package, um, so you could later try that at home. Uh, we'll do the bare minimum intentionally um, in order to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I decided to go through the process with a lot of trial and error so you learn something, you're not only to show you the end result, which is sometimes hard to understand with all the details. If you have, if you have questions in the middle, you're welcome to raise your hand. Um, at the end, if time allows, we'll do a Q&A session. Um, so what is a deb file? In essence, it's a sophisticated way to uh, distribute software. The idea is it for, for it to also be simple, as not only, um, we don't want it to be too complex. So we try to keep it simple, but still sophisticated. It's a delicate balance. Uh, it's simple because it's just um, an archive, very similar to Tarball, but Debian decided to use R, which if you know tar, the tar is tape archive, and R is just an archive, the difference is R has an index, so it's easier to extract bigger files. Um, the sophisticated part is that dev files also hold metadata about the software they provide. So it's not only dumping files on your file system, it actually has a metadata which tells them about dependencies, um, what you should do with certain files, uh, have triggers to other software. It's important uh, for the integration with the whole operation system or the whole packaging system. And we, of course, see the sophisticated part through this uh, slide. Um, how do we create one? Well, the very short version is a utility called check install. It's actually a wrapper behind um, configure and make make install. It registers which file were installed and knows automatically to create um, a Debian package from that. Um, it's, it does its work, so you can use it but it doesn't really create a um, very uh, standardic deb file in the eyes of Debian developers um, because Debian has a lot of policies and quality checks and usually Debian uh, check install only produces the basic stuff and has a lot of problems. So it does work, but you will never be able to take that deb and put it into um, the Debian official distribution. You can install it on your own machine but Debian will reject it. Would, they would say, you didn't do any QA check. Forget about it. Um, the short answer would be to use the DPKG build package utility. Um, it's a wrapper around other utilities which are already provided by Debian, but it makes our life very easy. There's, of course, more high-level wrappers around that as well. Um, and the long answer will do it during the presentation. Um, and this presentation isn't a replacement for the Debian documentation, it's just a short intro. When I wanted to become, became, become a Debian developer um, seven years ago, I started with going to someone that will actually show me uh, some of this stuff instead of just reading the whole documentation. So reading is good, but sometimes you just need a, a real world example. Okay, um, before that, we're going to switch a little bit between screens today. have a stand for the mic? Any idea? Something to put the mic on. Do we have anything? Nah, no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you very much, but no. Okay, so um, we'll imitate the process of 
really from the beginning. We have, um, let me clean this file as well. Okay, so we have um, download a table of some kind of software. Um, I'm using a utility someone built for the same lecture in the last Debian conf. It, it's called Pony, and you will see what it does in a second. The idea is that most uh, files you download, if it's source code, it will be at our GZ or uh, at our uh, BZIP image. Um, usually you have the name of the package and the version. Okay, we later see what it's used for. And of course, we get a directory by the same name. <coughs> so we'll do the regular process just to see what the program does. So that's configure and make. And that's all the software does, OK? So that's that a dummy utility, to, so I'll have a good example. OK, so we'll start with running <coughs> dpkg build package, and it will start to shutting us because we actually didn't do anything except extracting the original software. And we'll get, oh, we can't open Debian changelog file for reading, no such file in directory. So we'll do the directory which for general knowledge is where all the Debian stuff is uh, going to. Even, uh, we try to even put patches over there instead of changing the original code. So there'd be a total uh, separation between what's, what's come from upstream and what is part of the package. Okay, so it, and it's also useful because if you want to take a package from a, from a Debian source package, um, it's easy. It, you don't have to diff the source, you just take the patch. It's much easier. Um, and for creating the uh, changelog file, we'll use a utility that's called DCH. <coughs> and we'll get something like that. There's the, all the bold letters, um, the upper letters are some kind of variables. We'll replace them in a second. But the idea here is to have the name of the package, the version, the part of Debian you want to upload to, which is usually unstable, um, and the changelog. Usually initial releases for Debian are closing a bug which declares I'm, gonna to, I'm going to package this and this software from this website. Um, so it's uh, used to, we're used to um, close these bugs on the first upload. This also prevents a, a case where two people try <coughs> to package the same software for Debian. So the first one that's, that owns the bug is the one that's going to maintain that package. And you get your name, email, and of course the date of the changelog entry. This is why DCH is considered to be your best friend. <coughs> and I'll save it in a second. I want to show you another option of DCH. So for the next item, we want to add, we get a new line, and it, of course, update the time step. It's very useful when you want to edit files, and especially it keeps the right format of the changelog file and saves you from uh, counting spaces or thinking, well, should be a space before the, the double dash or after and things like that. Just use DCH. It's very easy. And, of course, we can, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, <coughs> no. Yes, I should put some kind of version before trying to upgrade it. <coughs> 
So for example, for the next version, I will only give the version number and I get the whole template um, as a gift. So that's easy. Okay, so we did a <coughs> Debian change log file and we tried to build again. Okay, Debian control, no such file in directory. So we create this file just for you to understand what this file is about. So that's the um, LibreOffice uh, presenters console extension, but it triggers only when you have more than one screen. But if you double the mirror, I see this, but you, sh you as well. Usually, I should only see one of them, and you should see the presentation. So I'm going to switch to show you like this. So excuse me. Okay, um, so essentially the Debian control files controls what we create. It has the information <coughs> of the source package and the binary package. Um, the idea is that binary packages are things you install in order to get a program uh, or different files. They don't have to be binary files. And the source program is, of course, the source. Um, notice that binary a package doesn't necessarily contains binary files, okay? Just a general concept, we'll get to it later. Um, so it tells what to create to which architecture and and what is needed to do for building the package. And of course, who is the maintainer, which is probably you. <coughs> and of course, the name of the source package should be identical to, the, to that part in the changelog file, otherwise you'll get a complaint. So we'll try to create a very quick, uh, quick file. Okay, let's see if that's enough. <coughs> Any question about the fields in the file? They quite they are usually self-explanatory. Um, um, architecture any means we will build to every binary architecture. So that's i386, AMD64, and whatever. Um, we have architecture independent, which is usually used for documentation or scripts or anything that is not binary. Um, the name of the source package and the name of the binary package aren't usually aren't identical. This could have been libpony, um, pony-php, depends on what the package holds. Um, Okay, so <coughs> we move a step uh, closer. So we see the wrapper of the uh, dpkg dpkg build package started using other other uh, dpkg uh, commands. Ignore this. I installed uh, a better version of LibreOffice, and it's not part of Debian, so I'd get complaints about it. But just ignore it. We clean. We try to clean the, our environment in order to start the build and I get a complaint about the Debian rule files which is missing.
the rule files is indeed one rule to, to, to rule them all, one file to rule them all. Um, the idea is this is the file that actually does the ser actually includes the series of instructions. <coughs> so that's the heart of the building process. Um, it has the, it calls all the other scripts and commands um, which are used in the process of the creation. Um, we'll go over them later. Uh, at the moment, I'll use a, a very short version of it. Um, it. The idea behind it is to save you a lot of time and uh, dealing with this file. It's very short. And on the way, I'll show you a, a useful template for that. So if we'll take the comments just to show you how short it is, that's the whole file. <coughs> and it, of course, wait. And so, and of course, a very short file, but this will later um, be expanded to a lot of commands. Um, at, if we times allow, we'll go over the longer, longer version and the previous one, actually. It looks something like this. With a lot of steps, so if we want to clean, if we want to install, if we want to build, there's more instructions. Um, usually for simple packages, you don't really need to know um, what's going behind the scenes. Um, it follows the regular step of <coughs> configure, make, make, install. Um, unless you want to add something, you can use, um, for now, the shortened version. Um, you can find in, within the Debian documentation how to add parts to the old version, to the new versions. It's easy. Um, at the moment, I think we can skip it and go forward and to, in order to get some kind of um, result. Yes. Could, could you repeat the question? Okay, so the question was, um, our project is using CMIC files. <coughs> um, what do we do? So usually you can uh, have build dependency on CMIC files. Um, rewrite the whole tool, it doesn't really matter. Um, the Debian rules file at the beginning is marked as um, just make file. But if you change the line, you can run a CMake script or whatever, it could be even a Python script, we don't care, okay? So just put your instructions here, everything will be fine. <coughs> There's the, um, the script does uh, looks, look for some of these uh, make targets, but you can easily replicate it with CMake or any other uh, scripting language, okay? Back to trying. <coughs> okay, so we get a lot of warnings. First of all, we almost have a deb file. Um, in the process, we got a lot of warnings, and because I want to go over with you over the output, we see that the main reason is we forgot the Debian compat file. Debian compat file is a file that says to the deb helper scripts, um, which the Debian uh, rules file um, starts, we see a lot of uh, hel helper scripts here. So the idea of the compat file to tell the sc these scripts which compatibility level you're running of, and Debian always changes, just changes and increases the compatibility level. Um, we'll use version 8 at the moment because of the new script. Uh, 
it works fine even with version 5, but then you have to use the old uh, versions file, the old the rules file. The question was about the compatibility levels. So this is from the Dev Helper Man page. <coughs> we'll go to newer version at least. So you see that each compatibility level has a few changes. In, so, and in order to support them all, the maintainer says, I'm at compat level five, so I know this script will behave in a certain manner. And if I want the new behavior, I'll just change the version here. Let's answer your question. So try to build again. <coughs> okay, let's roll this back up. Okay, so we started here, and we see uh, it understands what it what it should do because it's read the rules files and the control files. And it starts by cleaning our environment. Okay, um, Fakeword is a utility usually based, usually used um, in order for these scripts to think your root, which is really needed for uh, make install part. Uh, most make install scripts checks if you root because they try to write into slash usr um, and other uh, system library um, directories. So this script says, well. It's okay, don't worry, don't check that you actually written files there. Um, assume everything is okay and write to a temporary directory, which will later in the dev file will show as the real directory slash usr bin, for example. And this is the way we can <coughs> build packages as a normal user and not root and write to our home directory, whatever directory we are in, instead of uh, actually tweaking the system we are building on. So this is a really helpful script. So after we clean the environment, there's um, a, a run of configure. Just a second. So this is the, the output of the configure strip, script. And later we'll have make. OK, the v make is very short over here. It's just one compile uh, command. And then we start to do the Debian package, which our short script <coughs> is actually expanded to a lot of Deb uh, helpers. Um, each Deb helper does a minor task, like um, installing an Inescape if we had one, um, installing log rotate if we had one, because we have a very simple package. It doesn't really matter. Man pages, documentation, just a general copying of files. Um, links, compression, permissions. Debian has a lot of uh, behind the scenes scripts, <coughs> which helps you prepare your package. And at the end, we're skipping. We get. Um, Warning fan to sign the, these files because I'm not, I don't want to sign it right now because I'm not going to upload this to Debian. We'll skip the signing part so we'll get valid files. <coughs> okay, so the result, I'm right now at the point directory. The point directory isn't changed except for the build process. So when you write uh, make, all the compilation is done in this folder, but the results of the Debian files are one directory above. So at this stage, we already have a deb file. Okay. Um, another thing we have is the uh, tarball of the software we had. 
in two, four, two more five, which I'll explain in a second what they are. Okay, so the idea is that we have a source package <coughs> which you can send to other people so they will do their own build. Um, a good example of that will be the Debian build servers. So I build on AMD64 because this is what I have installed here. And I send the source package back to Debian and then build it for the whole architecture, architectures that Debian supports. Um, the idea is um, a description file the source format, which is the new one, I'll show you in a second how you do it, um, builds uh, the Debian changes and the rig tarball. If you don't have uh, the original tarball, it creates one, which is what, what we have here. So at the beginning of the, before the build, we, run, we ran clean, and then um, a utility took the whole directory and compressed it into a tarball. Okay, so this is what we began with, and this is the original uh, tarball. So the idea is for people to, to verify what did Debian do, we try to keep the original tar from, tarball from upstream, not to change it, not to uh, open and repack it, just use it the same. So for example, I can verify the MD5 on the upstream uh, website with the uh, source file from Debian. If we do change, we usually indicate it either in the change log or in the name of the file or in the version. So for a lot of software, you can go to the, up, um, to the upstream, verify you got the real program. Of course, Debian will sometimes patch the software because it fails to build or fails to do something else, bugs, whatever. Um, but you know the, the starting point is the same as upstream, and no one tried to inject you with a software named Pony version 1 and took it from somewhere else. So it's easier to track changes this way. So what we'll do, just a second, you'll see the command, it will be easier. So in this case, I just renamed or copied and renamed the file from upstream, and we try to build it again. And I'll show you the contents of the description file. So this file usually says, uh, gives you the information about the source package, uh, the format of the package, the name of the source and the binary architecture. These fields look quite familiar for you because we just put them into the control files and the um, changelog files, the name of maintainer, and gives you uh, a signature of all the files we created. Um, here we have the original file and the Debian diff. Debian diff is a format, um, is a file related to Debian source format one. We'll change the format and then we'll do a rebuild and you'll see the new output, just a second. And just to explain what I got right now, is I get an oh, uh, um, error message that says, well, you changed the uh, contents of your current library comparing to the original tarball. Um, if you want to put changes, put them in patches. Otherwise, 
I don't want to build your package. So in order to do that, I'll move the, this directory aside, reopen the tabor, and start cleanly. Um, another problem is that this software doesn't have the uh, clean target of the uh, um, make file. So um, in, instead of just uh, deleting the files over again, I'll do a shortcut and return to version one. And I hope for the next demonstration, I'll have um, a, a, an example a software that can actually clean after it's built. And the changes file is used to tell um, uh, whoever gets the package for rebuilding it um, what was the change it used uh, in the Debian build servers. So we see the files we are sending, which this time includes the binary result, not only the source. Um, the relevant change log entry, the d uh, details about the package, and also who changed it, comparing to who is the maintainer. Because in Debian, people can change packages they don't maintain. Um, usually, it's called non-maintainer uploads, QA uploads, and has a, a variety of them of names. How much time do I have? Twenty-five minutes. Okay. Another thing we we'll, we want to look a little bit about our package. And we use dpackage i, uh, capital I is for information. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so again, we see it's a very um, small package. You know already, you already know the details. Um, the installable, the size of the um, package after you install it. And we see the contents of the package has um, additional two files, control, a control file and an MD five sum file, which are used, um, this is for verifying the contents of the package uh, after the installation. So if someone wants to go over his machine and see that none of the, of the files were changed, he can compare it to the MD5 files. And the control, control file is used for dependencies. We'll do an installation. Now we, we want the pony utility, we just write pony, okay? So this is the idea how we take um, a small binary package uh, file and get it to the right location in Debian. We'll go over a few more things, um, but this is the idea of basic packaging. When you'll try it yourself, of course, I guess you'll find a, a harder example because the uh, pony utility is intentionally very very easy and very simple. Um, the documentation will cover a lot of the harder cases. Don't be worried if you get some of um, problems at the beginning. Usually, as you saw, the scripts are quite easy um, and tell you what's the problem, and they're quite direct, so you don't have to figure out weird stuff and like, I'm missing that file, but the errors is uh, saying something about that. And for the next step, wait, let's do another thing first. Yeah, 
for credentials. Okay, so we'll talk about uh, checking your packages in the meanwhile. The idea is that um, you can uh, use a script called Lintian in order to check the packages you did. It will give you a lot of um, warnings about what is wrong with your package, um, which is actually a good way to make sure your packaging is a good um, state. And the second thing I wanted to show you, and just want to run it so it will do something in the background, is learning by example. So I'm downloading the source package of PHP and Debian. It will take a few minutes. Okay, so we intentionally did a very um, minimal, pa minimal package, so we get a lot of warnings and errors. Um, usually you must have, um, in order for a package to enter Debian, especially a new package, no one accepts it if it has errors, warnings are dis um, debatable. Preferably, Lintian will say everything is okay and this is the best way to send the package if you want to wanted to get into Debian officially. Um, so let's go over some of the problems. We have no section field. We have non-native package with native version. We'll go over that in a second. Um, what else is important? We are lacking build depends. Okay, um, let's see, build depends. So the, Lintian has a very good explanation about anything that is missing. Okay, so you get an explanation, what is the problem, and some of them actually contain how can you fix it. It's very useful. Um, it should be ran by default on every package or, uh, that you make for Debian because it really catches all the common mistakes um, and everyone does common mistakes, even people with experience. It might be a typo, it might be something more serious, something we didn't think of, uh, and that's really important. And of course, as a Debian user, I really want my packages to be in a good state uh, for me to use. Uh, for example, this, this is one of the reasons Debian unstable isn't ne not necessarily unstable as this, a bit of the um, state of the software. It usually means the software changes a lot. For example, my home machine uses Debian unstable all the time and I update one once a day and it's very rarely that the computer stops working um, because I know people not only check the software, but also check their packages. And a lot of these tests are not only about um, quality in general, but integration quality with the system and other packages. So this will really help you make sure everything in your package plays nicely. Okay, at the meantime, uh, I want to go over with you about learning from examples, especially by others which is always the best option. Um, I used apt-get source option uh, to get the PHP package. In order to do that,
we need to have in the uh, source list file a line that begins with deb src, so it knows where to get the src package from. Sorry. <coughs> this is um, a more complete control file. So we saw the source already. The section, Debian, the Debian archives is um, splitted into a few sections. It's mainly for um, easy of maintaining it in and finding software and understanding when the software is in the archive. Um, it doesn't affect the binary itself, so the contents of the dev package is the same regardless of the section. It just gives you a hint to what this software is related or where could it be found in the archive. Um, priority, we have a few priorities. One that says, well, that's the basic core package in Debian. If you want to remove it, you will have to remove half your machine, be, be careful. Um, it go to optional, extra, and so on. It's again um, used to decide what you want. One minute, okay. Um, it's again, again used to decide what packages are, are mandatory and what are not. Maintainer we saw. We can have a few uploaders of the package, people that have maintaining it. Build depends is the list of other packages that we need in order to compile our package. In the previous example, Pony was very simple, but some other software might require a lot of uh, packages to build. If, for example, you need a CMake to build your package, just put it here. If needed, you can put a certain version of it. As you see, PHP needs a lot of stuff to get built. We also have um, the Debian standards version. So this is the version of the Debian policy which the package uh, conforms to. Um, some information when you can find uh, the sources for these packages, usually a Git repo, the home page, um, the package itself. So this was the source package. This is the binary one. We see we have an architecture all. So the package in the files in this package are uh, not relevant to the type of CPU you have and are shared between architectures. We can have de depends. We have a variable which is changed during uh, the build process um, to the uh, binary packages which are needed in order to run. Um, we have a description. And as you can see, we can have more than one binary packages uh, built from the same source package. So in this case, we will have PHP 5 common and lib Apache 2 mod PHP built from the same sources. This is useful to keep the um, Debian to be modular so you can install only what you need. Um, just don't forget to put the, re the relevant dependencies between these packages if you need. A good example will be a library in a binary that uses this library. You could use the library for whatever you want, but if you want the binary, you uh, depend on the library itself. And in the half minute I've left, I'll go over with you a utility that's called debdiff. Um, the idea is that you can compare deb files. Uh, for example, if you built the, your second version of the package, you can compare it to the first either by comparing um, the deb files themselves or by comparing the source package, um, comparing the DSC uh, files. So it will show you what was changed in the source or end in the, package, in the packaging you did, which is another good way to make sure you only change what you wanted and not had um, mistakenly inserted another changes. Think, for example, about a security update or um, a specific patch you want to put, and by mistake you put a lot of other stuff, this is a good way to catch it. We did learn by an example. Um, so we did the app get source package name issue, and there's another utility called dget, 
which get a URL of a DSC package, a DSC file, and knows how to pull um, the rest of the source package in order, in order for you to inspect. And of course, Debian has a few very good references for uh, maintainers and the uh, package developers. There's the new maintainers guide, which is available in this URL and also is a package called Maint Guide. The Debian developer reference, uh, which has a package of its own. And of course, the Debian policy, which is more technical. Um, but if you don't sure, if you're not sure what a certain uh, field can, which value can a certain field hold, um, just check the policy and you'll get your answer. And I'm done. Um, questions? Yes. Wait, wait for the mic. We have spare one. Raise your hand so we will give you the mic. So, uh, any specific issue with Java packaging? If you want to, Java, to package a Java application, is there some other tool, some other issue I may run into? Um, well, usually, if you need Java to build um, your application, you could use uh, OpenJDK. It usually works. Um, of course, depends on your software itself. Um, Otherwise than that, there shouldn't be any uh, issue. That's the main bank, big thing. More questions? Um, in a second. Um, I want to ask about conf dealing with configuration files. So you know this, you install one package, then user change starts and you install again, then there is problem because they're not compatible. And no, no, I mean, you want to merge new version, and what is the best way to deal with configuration files? Okay, in, in general, first you have to mark a file. Uh, by the question, I understand you already packaged something, or try to. Okay, um, so in Debian, you have a file inside the package itself. This, this, and this are configuration files. Um, don't override them without asking the user what to do, <coughs> because he, he might done changes to these files. Um, there's a utility called UCF, uh, User Configuration, I forgot what the last uh, letter means for, um, which helps you do the, the diff and merge between the files. And if it can't, it's ask, it's ask the user questions. Do you want to get the maintainer's version, keep your own version, or see the diff? Okay, it's very useful. Um, you'll have to add it to the build depends and also to the uh, dependency of the package because it's part of the maintainer scripts. Um, this leads me to another comment, which is one of the best thing we have in packages comparing to just tarballing the files and send them to the user, we can have maintainer script, we can do whatever you want after the files were copied, before they were copied, and this way control upgrades um, of your package. Yes? Is there any possibility for um, commercial developed software to be packed in a uh Debian packages and have some sort of licensing, so it's kind of, uh, let's say, um, not stolen? Well, technically, you can take, uh, you can skip the build process um, in the rule file, just copy, skip to the install part, and supply with, uh, already, uh, with binary files already compiled as part. Of course, it wouldn't go into Debian, it's probably not free software. Uh, but technically, it can be done. A lot of commercial, um, a, a lot of companies does that. When they want to package, they use uh, the final build, just repack it uh, into a deb file or RPM or whatever, instead of recompiling it from sources. And usually, you won't find source packages from commercial uh, products, only from free software. Yeah, but what about this um, license? Like, uh, you, you, you you get the package, and you cannot deploy it unless you have some sort of, um, let's say, a string or some key file or stuff like that. Um, you're asking a general one or continue, continue uh, your previous on, one? On Debian. Okay, on Debian.
in Debian, we have uh, a file called Debian Copyright. In this case, the PHP people use this template, which will, they, during the build process, copy to the right place. But it says, who is the maintainer of the packages? Um, who is the copyright holder? Um, and gives you all the copyright and license information. This file is, of course, available on the target machine. So on the target machine, you can see, for example, for Deb Helper, the changelog and the copyright file. Um, so if you want to know the status of each package, just go to uh, slash u usr share doc, the name of the package, and then to the copyright file. Someone here had a question? Yes. Um, the dot .org dot target gz, mm -hmm. is it always target gz? No. Um, just a second. Try to give you a short example in addition to answering you. Well, but it uh, yeah, okay. a .org uh, dot .targz gets created during build, right? Yeah, it could be created, but th that's not the best practice. Um, in recent years, Debian also accept um, org uh, bz2 and org uh, lzma, I think, formats. Um, you can read about it in uh, the Deb Helper Man page. But I think the bz2 uh, extension is the common one, except a gzip file. Yeah, my, my question is more about, um, I, I build a package, okay. and at that state, it creates a gz archive, mm -hmm. even if the source was bz2. And how do I it then verify the integrity of the source code? Okay, you can take your original bz file and change it to rig uh, bz, uh, bz2, and same as we did with the rig uh, tau gz, and have it rec be recognized is the rig file and it wouldn't create a second one. Could you talk louder or wait for the mic? Um, the next lecture is in five minutes. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought we have time for the Q&A. Thank you.